the mother of all parliaments has little time for free speech. Everyone here today had to apply for a special permit, otherwise they could be jailed for protesting illegally. It all started five years ago, when a man camped outside the House of Commons to denounce Western sanctions on Iraq. He's been here ever since, but the government's tried everything to get rid of him, including a new law banning demonstrations within a kilometre of Parliament. Ironically enough, Tony Blair once said of protesters, I may not like what they call me, but I thank God they can. That's called freedom. Not anymore. Which is why these people are here. They want Mr Blair to know they think his clampdown is ridiculous. After all, dissent is democracy in action. But it's under threat. One man was arrested recently for carrying copies of an article about civil liberties. Another woman was prosecuted for reading out the names of people killed in Iraq. Anything looking like an organised protest is banned, unless authorised in advance. Today's demo is an attempt to bend the rules, by gathering hundreds of lone protesters, each with their own licence. Permission to protest! Bollocks! Parliament Square's original lone protester has a question for those who come to talk to him. What are you going to do, he asks. Well, as a journalist, not a lot, except perhaps to report as honestly as you can on what you see. So, imagine a nightly news bulletin that kicks off by announcing Tony Blair is guilty of the crimes for which we hanged the Nazis. Well, don't be daft, you might say, but you'd be wrong. Certainly according to the Foreign Office legal advisor who resigned on the eve of the Iraq war, saying an unlawful use of force on such a scale amounts to the crime of aggression. Well, to quote the American prosecutor at the Nuremberg Tribunal, starting a war of aggression is not only an international crime, it is the supreme international crime, differing only from other war crimes in that it contains within itself the accumulated evil of the whole. So, forget about the massacres, torture, or the use of chemical weapons in Iraq, Mr. Blair should be tried for the same crimes as Hitler's henchmen. Well, he won't, of course. The only trial he'll face is in the court of public opinion. Which is why it's so important to tell the truth. In London, I'm Daniel Simpson. The time is now.